another session of writing code in Django. Um, last time, I want to apologize for last time I wrote code in Django, the quality of the stream was pretty abysmal. So I realized upon review that uh, it, it, was, it was pretty un unwatchable, pretty unusable. So uh, this time around, I picked up a um, capture car or a little capture thing and um, so now I can uh, now I can capture to my desktop and stream from there so I'm able to get pretty good quality um, pretty happy with it and I hope you are too so if you're watching and um, you, th you think that the quality could still be improved then uh, go ahead and let me know and I'll see what I can do about that um, so last time I streamed I was doing um, a Django and Svelte integration and um, I'm pretty happy with the with the results of that stream, the code that came out of that. Uh, I'm going to recap that later and I'm going to continue work on that project a bit later. Um, but for today I have a, a special project uh, that a friend of mine, Wiley, uh, was working on and uh, it's his first Django project of his own and he asked for a little bit of help and I love Django I think it's phenomenal and I advocate for it all the time and so whenever anybody um, that I know starts using it and asks for help in it I try to be as supportive as possible so that they don't get discouraged and so that they continue to choose Django as their framework of choice um, so anyway um, today we're looking at the game Grotto. It's a it's a game, new game in development from Wiley, um, and he agreed to let me work on it on stream here. Uh, so special thanks to Wiley for um, for letting me do that because um, it's not not an open source game right now, but. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very generous of him to let me put it out there for the world. Um, so, uh, what I was going to work on today, I feel a little bit easier as a contributor, um, and then a few things to actually improve the game. So, uh, recently I contributed this services file, which... Um, let me give a little background. The game, it's a it's sort of a maze of, of rooms that are sort of auto-generated from, um, from uh, uh, using this uh, um, okay. Markovify um, package. Yeah, so there's uh, some random text in there. There's the room, the, the theming of the room is based on color. Um, and the rooms are supposed to, you're supposed to be able to walk between the rooms, like a maze, right? Um, but the rooms were not adjacent to each other in any way before. So I built this out to sort of randomly assign adjacency between rooms. And um, after pushing it and after getting it accepted into the main branch, it was exposed to be a little buggy. So I'm going to go back and do a little bit of work on that. I'm going to write some unit tests for it to demonstrate how unit tests are written and um, and to actually ensure that it works correctly just for posterity's sake. Um, and then after that I want to tackle a, a bit of a change to how the URLs look. Right now the URLs are kind of kind of uh, clanky. They just use the, the primary key of the room which, um, eh, you know, it could be better. So what I'd rather have it do is use the room color. Uh, so yeah, we're going to focus on those three things for today. All right, so let's jump in with some basic administrative work here. Um, I've got a project directory pulled up. I was working on a branch called Room Creation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull, make sure that nothing happened on that branch. 
Alright, there's an update to main, so I'm going to go ahead and check out main. You know what, I'm just going to switch over here to this, because I like this better anyway. So this is uh, Sublime Merge, which I quite enjoy. Do a little pull in here. Gets everything caught up. I've kind of atrophied on my ability to use Git in the command line because of uh, how good Sublime Merge is. So anyway, I'm here, <coughs> and I'm going to... Um, I want to get this thing running. And yesterday I, uh, I went through the, the machinations to get it running on my machine and it was kind of, I didn't, I didn't like it, let's just say that, I didn't like it because uh, I was using virtual env but um, the project needs a newer Python version than what my virtual env was set up to, to use so it kind of gave me fits in getting started and I'd like to do something a little bit more repeatable than that for my own sake. And I'll, I'll include it in the repo for anybody else that wants to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a Docker file here and just um, get this thing running in an environment that should work for anybody whenever they pull this project. Um, so let me just go ahead and save this thing as Docker file. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So. project is kind of flat and the docker file would be uncomfortable sitting in this directory along with with manage so I'm going to move it up a directory here and I'm just going to put this docker file um, docker file in the directory above the project directory so for this docker file I want to start with a python image python um, I know that 3.7 works so I'm going to stick with that um, the dependencies uh, lab sass is there so I know we're going to need um, I know we're going to need at least APK install. I want to say we're going to want build base. I have to reference another project to. Um, to Let me do that. Let me just uh, get a new tab over here. I'm going to move this to another screen so that uh, the stream won't see it. Since I won't, you know, I don't have express permission to um, to show this code. So I'm going to definitely need live FFI dev, and I'm going to take build base as well. Just because that, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to need build base to supplement uh, this live FFI. I'm not doing Postgres here, so leaving that out. So this gets the OS dependencies installed. I can then start looking at the um, Python dependencies and everything is here in the requirements.txt. dev so I'm not going to worry too much about the run command the entry point um, what I'm gonna do is
Yeah. Okay. I'll make my entry point the the Python, uh, the, rather the manage.py um, command, and then from there, you know, you can tack in whatever command you might actually want as command, the Docker directive command. So entry point. I know I need one more thing in there before I before I get to that. Um, should be several more things actually um, comma there so I need to expose 8080 I need to actually copy the app in there so let's run uh, make dir slash app and let's make that uh, actually run and then I want to copy oh boy I need I forgot to do some stuff up here too let's copy the requirements txt which I want to be sure that that's living in the right spot here but alongside manage.py that's fine I'll just grab that so I'll go into Corrado get requirements.py uh, txt rather and I'm gonna copy that to um, slash app slash source and then well actually it works fine for all of this to just get copied straight away so I'm gonna just copy all of Grotto to app.source I'm oh, sorry app slash source and that will include requirements.txt I need to set my working dir so work dir um, and that's going to be slash app slash source that's where dot slash manage or that's where I manage dot py exists mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That gets me close, at least. Um, and then, just to keep it familiar in, in my um, typical workflow, let me go ahead and make one more file here called Docker Compose. Oh, I have a viewer. Hey, welcome, viewer. Um, and in this Docker Compose, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to declare all of the um, all the services that are at play here. This is a really simple, um, really simple setup right now. It's kind of just in order to make it look like a, a project that I like any of the projects that I have worked on recently. Uh, so all we really have is the app itself as a service. Um, it right now it's using databases is ever necessarily intended to be a permanent fixture. Um, you know, this is a an app for this is a game rather for for friends. I think that's the target audience. So it's it's not something that needs to have a production ready database straight off the bat. So just a um, just a SQLite database contained within the app itself is, is fine for now. Um, this is all to say that um, we don't need a we don't need any external services. We don't need a database. We don't need Postgres. We don't, or rather, uh, that is a database. We don't need uh, like Redis or queuing or anything anything fun like that. So um, I want to tell this to build the. I'm going to tell this to build the, the Docker file in the current directory. And I want to um, make sure that the port is exposed by Docker. So, did I do 8080 before? I meant to do 8000. I don't even know what 8080 is about. 
Yeah, I did. 8,000. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for the sake of uh, any viewers out there that might have you know, a different monitor size than what, I, what I'm work, working with here, which is admittedly pretty standard. Um, I don't really think we need anything apart from that to define this thing. So um, we ought now to just be able to move up a directory and say docker compose um, build. And it's going to go through pulling the image and setting everything up. So whenever I tried installing the, the Python requirements on my machine, in like a virtual in it complained because numpy which is a dependency um needs to be python 3.7 and oh dang it dang it okay um that's a easy fix uh it doesn't like to make a directory that in a directory that doesn't exist so app didn't exist or rather app didn't exist so it couldn't create source. So I just need to give it a tech P that says make it okay if the parents don't exist. Like create all the parents up to that. So no complaints there. Oh jeez. Could not open requirements file on that such file driver. Da, da, da. Liar. You are a liar. Okay, so I copied, um, I might have copied that wrong. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, the, the particulars in the Docker file, or the, like the particulars in, well, damn it, that didn't work either. Um, the specifics of what happens um, when there's a slash here or not, uh, are, um, they're documented, I just, and I've read the documentation, I just, you know, didn't completely absorb it, so I'm just going to try a few things, because that's faster than going back to the docs. Um, it is because we're not in that directory, I haven't set the working there to that, so... I'm going to do that a little bit higher up. And there we go. It likes that better. So the idea that I'm going for here is to um, it's to simplify the uh, dev setup a little bit uh, to make it to make life a little bit easier for any contributor for me specifically as a contributor, um, and I'm going to offer to include it in the project for any other contributor that might care to use Docker. Do, do, do. So it's going to take a while to do this. Hopefully, um, hopefully we won't have to mess with the Docker file for too much longer because it's not it's not actually that interesting. Um, it's useful, but um, I'd rather be doing the actual um, the, the business of the, the game development itself. We're just going to leave that alone for a minute and let that think about what it's doing. And in the meantime, uh, we can start thinking about what's broken about this service. So the report that I got from Wiley was that um, whenever you were 
starting out with zero rooms, like if you deleted all the rooms and you started making new rooms, that the that this thing would freak out. Um, and I can believe that. I can totally believe that. But before I start um, making any changes here and thinking about um, 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 yeah, here I'm just reviewing what else was uh, what else was changed since I uh, last looked at it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new branch for myself. This will be um, moon creation two, just because I'm super original. Um, no electric boogaloo or anything like that. Not into that stuff. So, uh, yeah. So the problem that that was coming up is that uh, whenever whenever we were adding a room um, and no rooms exist, it was freaking out a little bit. Um, and I can kind of see why that is. The logic down here is pretty simple. Um, but let's go ahead and, and start jumping into the actual unit tests themselves, the unit tests that I want to write to demonstrate the functionality of this thing. Uh, here's the model for room. Um, and we'll need that in a minute, so I'm going to leave that up. Um, and I'll just reopen the Docker file when we get there. And results generator yeah we're gonna need that later but I'll come back to it um, so let's make a new oh wait there's already a test here beautiful as with most sort of early Django projects this test file is gonna be just a dustbin um, and that's fine tests tests need to come whenever there's functionality that is stable enough to merit merit testing, right? Um, that may be controversial to some who are out there in the software development world. Um, I I like a test driven thing, but I don't know that that ever happens when you're developing a game, because um, or whenever you're an indie developer of a game, you know if you're working for Rockstar Games, then yeah, sure you probably have some testing going on. Because uh, there's a lot of money involved, and uh, you, know, you can sort of force people to be rigorous uh, whenever they're being paid. Um, but game dev, indie game dev, you know, a lot of these things are sort of passion projects or learning projects or something like that, and it's it's hard to it's hard to uh, um, enforce any rigor there. So I, I'm fine with testing whenever you get to the point that a test makes sense. And I feel like that's, you know, I can do some limited scope testing of this particular behavior and ensure that uh, that there won't be derelict rooms after um, after uh, a room generation sequence and uh, um, and that the, the room generation sequences work regardless of any uh, of any initial situations. Uh, and let me turn off my notifications. Um, okay, so then our test case, let's think about what we want here. I want to do a service, uh, I want to test these services, so I'm going to just, again, be super original and do room adjacency service test case I'm going to inherit test case here I'm just doing basic Django test I'm not going to mess around with um, um, PyTest or anything like that I'm not trying to introduce any other dependencies into the project I just want to get you know I just, I just want to be able to verify at least for myself that uh, these things work right and to me, this is actually a really great way of doing it. Once you have some proof of concept code down, 
lay some lay some tests out that show or that that uh, capture the use cases of the code, and then from there, damn it, I turned off notifications. I have to do it in both servers that I'm in. It's great. Slack is nice. It's nice. Okay. Um, where was I? Right. I want to do some tests to, um, well, A, show that you can start from zero rooms. So, um, I'll make a test here. Test. Um, room generation um, I want to have access to the service first of all so let's do that um, import or rather from map builder dot services Import um, adjacency service, and then I also want a model from map builder models import. Hmm. So hold on one second. I gotta a toddler downstairs in his playpen crying. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. There was no distress. I think he was singing along with the show that he's watching. So, where were we? We were about to write a test for... Uh, yeah, when we start out making rooms. So, hmm. I know that we have this room generator over here, and you should just be able to call generate room and... Should do everything. Um, I want to make sure that that's the case. Use generate room. Yeah. Okay. So that's what um, by default whenever he is making a room. So I'm just gonna use that. Um, as the sort of easiest way to get access to creating a room. Now, whenever a room is created, it is going to try to add the room to the set of rooms that exist. So, um, you know, maybe maybe I could refactor this uh, into for whether or not that happens. But for now, I'm just going to let it happen because that that's really the real test. That's sort of the end-to-end -end test of this behavior. So I don't quite know what to expect from it right now, but let's go ahead and import that as well. 
from map builder generator. Actually, yeah, let's do like he did. In generator import generate room. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, I've got all the, all the stuff right. I I realized that I've come up into his project and um, not followed any of the casing that he used in the early project. Um, I'm going to overpower his casing choices and impose my own casing choices onto his project. Um, okay, so I'm going to generate a room. And I'm going to see what happens. I'm, I would hope that there's no... Um, I would hope that there's no exceptions being thrown here from this room generation. So even just having this in there as a test, if it passes, that means that there's no exception. So I'm kind of cool with that, just as a as a quick and dirty test. Um, but the if it, you know if I'm wanting a really comprehensive test here, and you know there, I'll get into an argument with anybody about whether a unit test should be comprehensive or not. Uh, you know, the name is unit test. But in practice, um, tests that are bigger than a single unit have their place. Um, and I guess I'll leave it at that. So I'll generate another room. And uh, ideally here, actually, if the code was written, if the code behaves the way I hoped to write it, then those two rooms ought to be linked by default because there's no other alternative as to who to, who to provide exit to. So in both cases, um, room. so I'll just have to infer out there, um, actually let's do a self dot assert equal room dot objects dot count is zero and then here I'll assert that it's one and here I'll assert that it's two because the second room will be generated um, and then I'm going to take either one of those rooms um, so room dot objects dot all um, rooms delete that and then I'm going to just assert, uh, well, what do I want to do? So rooms zero uh, exits all zero should be equivalent to rooms one, right? Just as a, as a, the only possibility here. So I'm going to self assert equal. I kind of worked at that outside in. I didn't quite know what I wanted up front. I had to kind of suss it out. So rooms zero should be just the first object in the first room, really. I'm not have these. I don't have these sorted anyway. Um, so there's no guarantee as to which room it will be. But there's only one other room apart from that, and that's room one. Um, I know that room this this whatever that zero room is has exits, or I. I'm asserting that it has exits, um, that there's at least one of them, um, that that first, that that zeroth exit of the zeroth room must lead to room one. So let's see where we are with our Docker file. Oh my. Oh. What in the hell? is going on with Spacey. Did something happen to my computer? Let's... Okay.
All right, that thing, the damn thing gone wild. Okay, it's doing it. It's installing all that shit. It's just changed processors on me. Did something happen? Okay, I'm just gonna let it run then. That's fine. Um, so the thing I was wanting to do was to use the container to run these tests. Uh, however, I do have uh, a, a virtual environment yesterday, so I ought to be able to get it going again. So I'll, I'll work on Rado. And then I think I had to do something a little screwy with, um, let me see if I can find it here. Do something a little screwy with my. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't have to do anything screwy with that. Uh, I just had to invoke this thing using Python 3.7, which I'm guessing is actually breaking my breaking my uh, virtual env blood barrier there. So all the hacks now. I'm gonna have all the hacks on my computer. Because uh, I'm using the system Python or a system Python, and Python's a mess with regard to its installation in most systems. That XKCD comic is right the hell on. Um, okay, so I'm here. I'm not in the right directory though. So let's uh, CD into the you know um, the hierarchy that I put together here has. Um, a sort of bigger folder on the outside and then the uh, within a smaller directory. So the smaller directory there is where the grotto is where dot slash manage lives. So I'm going to pop into here and use Python 3.7 to um, run manage.py and I want to do unit test. Uh, I did mean test. Test. It's been a minute since I um, since I uh, used the um, Django built-in test suite. So um, it'll take me a second to reinterpret this. So error. What is this? Oh, that's from the that's from the uh, the fun thing that um, pants. Oh, pants. Um, that's from like the 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 Django tutorial. Yeah, the, the polls app there. Um. So yeah, this thing fails because reasons. For neighbor and neighbors, local variable neighbors are on line 75. So thank you, unit test. Now I'll get to see that happen and I can see that it's fixed and not have to write any extra code about it or to, you know do a bunch of uh, running around. <coughs> to Okay, so for neighbor and neighbors, make adjacent. Um, yeah, it's not doing that. It's not doing that. Um, it is. So it's 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 just skipping right past this. I don't have neighbors, uh, so I can fix that with just a little, a little um, initialization here. It still doesn't like it. Um, it doesn't like it because I am 
not okay. It's a it's the, it's a problematic edge case. Um, so let's let's actually review a little bit since nobody here got to look at this algorithm before now. Um, hi again, viewer. Thank you for watching. Um, tell your friends. I'm waving at you. You can't see me do it. I need to get a webcam. That'll make this stream 100 times better. You can see my smiling, beautiful face. Um, so what's happening whenever you call for add room is, uh, first off, I'm seeing if the room has already had rooms, if it's already been through this, if it already if it already has exits, then don't don't do this. So just get out of here. Um, and then if it uh, otherwise, it's going to look for possible neighbors for itself. And if it finds a neighbor for itself, then um, it's going to go down here, and it's going to just bop that in as a as a neighbor. Um, and then if it doesn't have yeah if it doesn't have any neighbor candidates then it's going to try to see why and if it's because there's no other room or if it's because everybody has already all the rooms are already completely saturated with exits then it's going to look for a random room and it's going to take one of the exits from that room at random and it's going to split them apart and just inject itself in the middle as a neighbor to both of those and then, um, and then from there, more neighbors could be added to, to that new node in the, in the tree. Um, so once the neighbors have been chosen, um, either randomly from the available candidates or by picking uh, an existing set and splitting them up, then it's going to make, it, make, its, make this new room adjacent to both of them. If there's no neighbors, it doesn't do that. So, um, part of the problem here is that adjacency candidates excludes any node from consideration that doesn't have exits. And the reason that I'm doing that, and the reason that I'll defend that, is so that we don't get disjoint trees, right? Like, I, I don't ever want it to be the case that there are unreachable nodes from any other node. So if I'm in a room, I ought to be able to get to every other room in the maze somehow through some combination of exits. Um, if I lift this restriction, then the, the then suddenly I can start growing two trees. Like I'll, I'll be picking a node that has no connections to any other node and connect to it which suddenly means that, that these two nodes don't get, they don't have any access to the rest of the tree, the existing tree. So this is purely to protect the integrity of the tree. Does that make sense? Hit me up in chat if that makes sense. Um, so, uh, the reason that that's a problem is that there's no consideration of that possibility here, right? What what it looks like to, uh, and actually, what I noticed is that we're we're hitting we're hitting the second generate room before we killed out on or we we uh, um, uh, what's the word here? We, uh, we had an exception at line eleven. Here we're at line 13. So we made it a little further, right? We made it from the first generation of a room to uh, the second uh, time that we generate a room. The next generation, if you will. Um, so what's happening is, is that... Um, What's happening is that, uh, uh, well, let's sh shit, what is happening? Let's think about it again. Right, we're, we're, we're faulting out here on 72 because we're 
we've we've gotten into this branch because there is a room that exists apart from myself apart from the, the room under consideration room so named um, and we've made it to here we so yeah we've picked out the other room we're looking at it we we assume that we're here because there's a multitude of rooms that all have um, that all that are all all are completely saturated with the maximum number of adjacent rooms to it. That's the assumption inherent to this right, dance card full. Um, however, we've gotten here in a situation when that's not true. We've gotten here in a situation where there is uh, plenty of rooms, but none of them have any connection to each other whatsoever. So. Uh, what we need to do there is, man, that's a, that's a good little edge case. Um, okay, so let's let's make this a little bit more complex here. So if uh, let's get room count as a as a variable. Room count pow, and then so if room count equals one, then only room, no exit. Uh, else. Actually, that should really just be an else here in this situation. Um, <laughs> so I haven't changed functionality at all yet. I just sort of wrote the logic a little bit differently and made it a little bit more um, documented as to what exactly is happening here. Um, what I what I can actually so I know that there's another room. So at the very least, I can say that, that this exists. Now from here, um, from here, I can just see if there is a connection there, right? Because the, that covers the other possibility that, that it's, that it, if there, uh, rather, let me, let me back up. If I check to see that this other room um, has a connection and it has uh, any connections, then the only way that can occur is if it has the maximum number of connections. Otherwise, it would have appeared in candidates. Uh, so a little, a simple sort of yes/no check here does the trick. Um, in fact, you know, I could, I could just do this the sort of simplest way possible. Let me just do that. I'm gonna try to see if there's another exit, if there's an existing exit from this other room that I've chosen, um, and if there is, set. Uh, let's see what error are we actually getting. Index error cannot choose from. Sequence. I'll take it. Um, so if that index error occurs, then there is no neighbor. I'm going to refactor slightly here and say neighbors equals two split. Just a list with that one element, and then uh, here I'll do nothing. Um, uh, else I'm gonna push, or rather append. Neighbors not append. Also to split. And then I don't 
need that. So, let me, let me put that back so you can see it. So I was sort of manually making the list of neighbors. Um, I was also separating the neighbors um, so that they would not have the maximum number of connections and would therefore allow uh, a connection to exist. Um, but I've started building neighbors in place and appending to it here if also to split exists. Um, and if it doesn't exist, if there's nothing to split off from there, then uh, nothing, nothing special happens. just document this a little bit. Is there a connection to split? If so, split it up and then um, put it into neighbors. Let's save that. Let's go to our test console. Let's see what we've got. Hey, both success. Awesome. Um, and then we can bop over and check out our uh, um, Man alive. Our Docker build. This is a long time. Okay, so it makes me glad to be doing a Docker file or a, a, to be building a Docker image because I'll be able to reuse these installs on any number of future uh, uh, builds because they're unlikely to change at least quickly. So, um, hopefully that pays off. It may just end up being a pain in the ass. Um, so, okay, so our test passed. It's a simple test. It's a humble test. Um, I'm not actually using that. Um, but I think it shows the thing, you know, this process getting off the ground. Um, and then what I want to do then is um, I don't want to try to write a test to verify. Actually, you know, yeah, I, I, I hesitate to write a test to try to verify that all of the rooms are connected. Um, I kind of feel like it's easier to do, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's easier to do the mathematical proof that they'll all be connected. But um, mathematical proof that they're all connected doesn't, isn't actually, it doesn't, it doesn't carry much weight because if the implementation doesn't um, faithfully implement those math that, that mathematical proof then uh, then it's not true and it can have bugs either way so um, having some test to show that a having some test to verify this that that only one tree ever grows is uh, would seem to be worthwhile here. Um, hmm. That doesn't seem like a very fun test to write. At least not right away. So maybe I'll leave that off for a little while. Um, let's see, what else could I do in these tests? I could like tack on a bunch of extra rooms to sort of um, uh, um, uh, just verify that this thing can go beyond two, right? Um, every time that that happens, I can make sure that it has 
exits. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. Let's do that. Let's keep going on this test here and let's do uh, four um, IDX in range. Uh, let's just. Uh, so I'm not. I think that 10 fits with the scale of the game. Maybe 20 fits with the scale of the game. Um, just fine. So, hmm. I would like it better if generate room returned the room object so that you could use it. But I think we can. I think we can still do it without that. Um, let's. See. Here, what won't be a hassle? Um, boop, boop, boop. So we have all we have rooms here. Mm -hmm -hmm. Every time I so I'm I'm going to be generating a room, generate room, blah, I'm going to be doing that 20 times or so, and every time I should be able to um, identify the new room. You know what? That's a pain in the ass. I'm not going to do that. Uh, instead, I'm going to just change the implementation of Room Generator a little bit so that it returns room. Done. Um, so what that allows then is to, instead of... Um, Instead of having to do this query set here, it lets us um, more more immediately access. So I'll just do room one exits is equal to room two, and then here I do new room. Should be able to show that new room has exits. So self dot assert equal room uh, rather new room dot exits dot count. Uh, well, let's say not equal. Not equal to zero, so that it, it definitely has some exit. And if we wanted to be thorough, we could check that no room at the end of this for room in. Actually, I'm just going to do a new query set. Yeah, so for room in room dot objects dot all. Self dot cert less than uh, room dot exit. I keep doing exists. We do exits. Count four. Uh, less than equal. Less equal than. What the hell is it? Uh, shout out to Zeal. Uh, it's a, um, a offline documentation browser uh, desktop application that I use and love. And it makes finding these things really easy. I just go to the bar and type in assert less equal. Uh, assert less equal. Okay. Um, I'll give a quick view of that. I keep it on another screen so that it's uh, 
easily accessible all the time. Um, yeah, I, just, I knew I wanted an assertion. I'm, uh, you know, it's in Python. If I wasn't sure, I could also check it in Django. Um, so I just started typing assert less, and it uh, brought up all the options there. So assert less equal. There's no than. Should have guessed that. So let's put this to the test again. I'm gonna, oh man, spacey still going. What is spacey anyway? Uh, let's do this test again. Everything worked. I love it. Um, so we're now able to generate from scratch. Another functionality of services is if you have a bunch of rooms, that you can reorganize them and that you'll get new adjacency. Um, and basically, it's doing it's doing uh, um, It's doing not quite the same. It's using add room at the base of it to um, to to sort of re-roll the adjacency. Um, so I pick I pick two. Basically, I, I want to choose. I want to make sure that we always have enough rooms to do an adjacency. If there's only one room, it can't be adjacent to anything. So if there's if there's less than two, we just bonk out of here and say later. If there is, um, uh, if there are existing exits, I want to get rid of all of them. So for every room, I want to just clear all the exits, uh, and then pick two starter rooms. Um, make those two rooms adjacent, and then go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of the rooms um, and just to make it just to make sure I don't do the starters twice I go ahead and leave them out it wouldn't matter anyway if I left them in because they would already have adjacency so they would get sieved out right here so I could probably leave that off and this thing would work fine um, so let's write a quick test for that while our docker file still builds Okay, I got it. I just gotta know what is spacey. Spacey. Did I spell it wrong? No e. Okay. Oh jeez. Spacey. Spacky. Oh, natural language processing. Okay, now I get it. Yeah, it's because he's he's using this, I'm sure, for uh, um, helping to uh, uh, maybe as a dependency even of um, Mar Markov Markovsky Markovify Markovify. I trust that Wiley has his reasons for, for Spacey to be there. Uh, it just takes a damn long time to get built and installed. Um, so what was we talking about? Yeah, we was going to do another um, test room, test uh, adjacency rule. So I'm just going to make a bunch of rooms for IDX in range. Maybe this is an inline here. I'm just going to generate room for uh, in range 20. 
So these all have their own adjacencies. Um, from there, I want to say room adjacency service. Dot, uh, what the hell did I call it? Reorganize rooms. We're going to do a little reorg here. And then, well, A, no, no exceptions, let's hope. Um, and B, um, we, you know, it's random, so it's, it's unlikely that the tree would be the same. There's no guarantee that it couldn't be the same. Um, The oh, I don't even know, man. I guess I'll just run it like this and see if I get an exception. It's not again. It's not the most thorough of unit tests, but it, there it goes. It's testing. Don't get testy with me. Tests to run. Error. That E means error. Something happened. Oh. Piffle. Piffle, I say. I forgot to uncomment the import line that gave me access to that little service there. So we're just passing the hour mark. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a rest on the unit tests and move on to the main attraction of uh, fixing up the URLs to be a little more different. So since I can get this thing running, run server, without having the Docker thing done, let's go ahead and have a look at it. We need to go to Map Builder, and Map Builder will give us a nice index. And oh, we have a gray room and a gray room. Dang. Whoa, colors aren't quite gray. But you can get from the gray room to the gray room, so that's cool. Um, so what I wanted to point out up here is that the um, the URL is kind of it's a little poopy. Um, Map Builder is the name of the app, but it's you know it's not actually representative of what's happening on the screen, right? Like we're not we don't we're not building a map here. The map is already built. Um, so what I want to do is and 15. What the hell is 15 even? That's not useful at all. Um, so what I want to do is change this up so that it looks more like room gray because um, that's that's cooler I think that's more that's more useful um, as a as a basis of a, a of a potentially a puzzly kind of a game you know it's 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 more semantic and, and cuter so I want to I want to do that um, so let's set about Let's check up on the, the unit test all passed, so that made me happy. Uh, we already saw that happen. Um, I want to check up on my Docker file. Hey, it built. Would you look at that? Okay, so now if I Docker compose, I need to stop this, otherwise it's going to complain. Docker compose up. This freaking thing should start a running, and it wants a subcommand. Right. Okay. Cool. So because of the way I wrote my Docker file, um, I'm going to give this thing a command in the Docker Compose command. And I think I can just do run server. Maybe I'll do it 
verbosely. And let's see what happens now. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see a little bit more happen. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay, no, I, I guess that's probably all it's going to do. Let's see. Okay, it didn't like that, but let's see what happens if we go back to the builder. Oh, first shot out of the gate. I love it. Um, so, Dr. Compose, uh, I guess second shot. I had to fix the command. But um, the sort of infrastructure around getting this thing running without having to use virtual env or without having to mess with your system Python or anything like that um, works. So I'm happy to have that uh, in concept done. Make my life a little bit easier here. I want to do one more thing with this Docker Compose. I want to, um, I want to map our um, map our uh, volumes so that um, the code changes that I make will appear in the um, will appear in the uh, uh, container, sort of at runtime. So I think that's all I need to do to make that happen. And then from now on, when I use Docker Compose, I'll use with tack D so that I detach from it. All right, that seems to still be running. Um, now, as I make changes, those changes should sort of be dealt with live. Um, okay. So, I don't care about character builder right now, so I'm looking at views. The, the magic of Django um, will let us do this change, this URL change, without too much um, without too much code having to be written. The easiest thing I can do, the most effective thing that I can do is um, to close that um, is to fix the top level URLs. So this thing is called I mean that's that's comes from right here in the URLs file, the top level, with the, the uh, so-called uh, project app. I think that's what it's called. Um, so I'm just going to change this to be room. We could go rooms. Um, rooms might fit a little bit better. Uh, it's a little more webby, I think, to use the plural there like what you'd use if it was a REST framework at least. So, you know, we're not building a REST framework, so um, we don't really have to adhere to those kinds of uh, um, conventions. But uh, whenever you go to that URL, and I think it should be in effect now, yeah, there it is. Um, Whenever you go to that URL proper, it takes you to a list of the rooms. So um, this seems seems good to me. The um, so the next change will be here in the map builder URLs. So right now the URL references slug. Um, well, it's 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 asking for a reference to a slug and it's calling that PK um, which is fine I'm just gonna change that to name because the name of the room is uh, is the color and that is going to make some changes happen on the 
on what the view receives. So I'm going to just expect this to break now. If I go to room 15 like before, it's going to complain because it wants, it wants the object PK or slug. Um, and what we haven't, d we just haven't completed the job in, in Django yet. So um, I'm going to use a moment here to do classy class base views bv there we go dot co dot uk this is an excellent site if you do any sort of django work at all um because it will uh it, it, it tells you everything you need to know about what a detail view is for instance so the the only thing I think I need to change here is slug field. Possibly query PK and slug as well. Yeah, let's put both of those in and I think this thing will work. So what Django wants to do is to just use the PK that it gets from a URL like this one, um, but it can be coerced by using query pk and slug. pk and slug to true, and then we'll also change slug field name. So now I think this will work. Okay, it didn't like the it didn't like the slug still. Why didn't it like the slug still? Um, let's do gray. Didn't like that. Hmm. Um, let's just put this back to PK. I don't actually think that's going to change anything. Expected a number, but got gray. Now, why did it expect a number? Hmm. Okay, so something's happening. Something's happening with this uh, slug thing, and it's being a babby. So I'm gonna just do a quick search in Zeal. Oh, I have Zeal on tag four um, for slug. Slug field. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make sure I'm looking at the model slug field and short label do, 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 do. implies db index to true I don't think that should mess with anything Okay, let's see what's actually happening here in Git object, and maybe we can understand um, understand why it's freaking out about this so much. And maybe maybe I've got the wrong. Oh, um, did we define the model there in views? Yeah, we did. Okay. Do, do, do. Yeah, let's get down in there and look at Git object. self quarg get slug url quarg so i set that right no damn it i am a dingus 
I couldn't remember it for one damn second. Uh, oh, aha. I meant to set another thing. I think I, here, let's URL quarg. And then I think I probably need slug field too. Well, well let's try it. And that result. Okay, so I do need slug field as well. So let's do field. Give that a second to refresh itself. It didn't find array room. Didn't like that either. Because I certainly see a gray room. This is fun. Um, let's fix the template uh, room.html so that it gives us the links correctly. I have them set here. They pick out the room ID. Um, oh, you know what? I should be using color name and not name. That's why it's freaking out on me. So let's do URL quarg can be name. Well, let's keep it consistent here. Color name. Color name. Fix it over here in the URL as well. Color name. And voila. There we go. That makes me happy, happy, happy. So we gotta, oh boy. <laughs> okay. So we have some inconsistency. The name is not quite equal to the to the. Um, The name is not quite equal to the color name here. Wait, hang on now. Reverse for room with arguments. Light slate gray not found. What are these color names? Oh, okay. There's another color. Oh, okay, I get it now. There is a light slate gray. Okay, let's see what we can do about that. Um, well, we need to deal with this anyway. Um, it, the room generator is random, so land on top of each other, and uh, that we end up generating a room with the same name, which would cause havoc. Ah, right, right, right. elaborate color um, so uh, as we create the room what I'm gonna say we so blah, 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 moving back up the URL wants a slug and a slug has a particular definition according to the Django um, Um, containing only letters, numbers, underscores, or hyphens. They're generally used in URLs. Underscores are not technically allowed in a URL. I think they work fine. They're, they're not, I think, I don't think they're supposed to, but they do because, you know, because otherwise, havoc. Uh, hyphens are preferred, so I'm going to stick to hyphens if we do that. Um, I know that they have a slugify 
which will do the thing for us and make a slug. So what I'm going to propose is that for color name, we just slugify it here in room generator. As we make this dang thing, we're going to say slugify. And what I want to check, though, before I make that change unilaterally, is where else color hex is being used. Oh, not color hex. Uh, color name. So it's being used in the definition of the model. No problem. It's being used in room generator at the end. It's being used in the URL, perfect. The view, that's fine. A migration, no problem there. And the and the H the, the template for the room. Uh, it's being used as a class, so really hyphenated, uh, slugified works fine there and it's being used there so I don't see anything that breaks because we make this thing a slug so I'm gonna go ahead and say let's do that um, and that slugify um, it won't ensure uniqueness uh, which we ought to do um, how does that play so Django utils text slugify. So from Django utils text import slugify. And so it doesn't do any uniqueness stuff in there. Um, Elaborate color is put through get color. Um, I well, let's see. Let me take a drink of water here while I think about this. So my inclination is to validate that the elaborate color is unique amongst the set of rooms before moving forward from here. Um, I think that there are a significant number of colors. The word lists, colors, yeah, there's, there's a lot. So, you know, if he starts pushing the limit to um, you know, generating 300 rooms, then he might need to done duckety mud colored. Love it. Yeah, if he starts pushing the limits and, and making too many rooms, then it's going to be a problem. But if he just sticks to 20 rooms or so, then, then there shouldn't really be a problem. Oh, you know what's even better is to fix it right here. No need to mess with anything at all. Um, color list. Hold up. Is that even a thing? Light slate gray? Oh.
Oh, okay, there it is. Three word, three that, uh, uh, three things there. Um, words are what those things there are called. Three words. Um, Okay, so that's not a bad way of doing it. It's basically the same as what I'm doing in the other thing. Um, what I want to do, though, is try to limit the the, the possibilities here. Um, so let me and let me, let me be careful here. Um, capitalize, slugify. Yeah, I don't like it. I, I don't love it. Um, there's not a great way. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna leave this. I'm gonna leave this the way it was. I'm not gonna slugify it. There's color name. Instead, I'm going to make a new thing, color slug. Aha. Uh -huh. On the model. Um, but that shouldn't be a problem. You, well, you don't have to be quiet on this just because I'm streaming. You can, you, you can exist. You can exist in my content creation world. Just <laughs> FYI. Just like Mr. B. Okay, she's not here, everybody. She's telling me she's putting her finger over her lip, sort of pointing vertically toward her nose. I don't quite understand what that's supposed to mean. What could that mean? I only have one viewer right now. I'm guessing it's Wiley. So, like, you know, let's keep it casual. I'm guessing it's Wiley. If it's not Wiley, chat, and we can get some community <laughs> engagement here. Super cash. Yeah. Super cash. Um, okay. New thing, color slug. It's a little bit better here. It's just it's a little bit of bloat in the um, in the uh, the thing there. Um, in the uh, what are we calling this? The the Django model there, but no big deal. Color slug equals. And I'm just going to use the models dot slug field. And that way I don't have to worry about pissing anybody off with uh, with using color name in, a, in an unsanctioned way. So the reason, I, the reason I'm going to use color name directly from the out as it appears in the color list is so that I can use that to exclude colors from the list that have already been chosen. So trying to ensure uniqueness of colors in our room generation. Uh, so in a slug field, let's go to tag 4 and let's see what slug field is all about. Implies setting DB index to, oh god, I didn't mean to click that. Uh, implies with, blah, blah, blah. let's switch to get back to it. Mm -hmm. Specify a max length, max length is not specified. Use a default of 50. 50 is probably fine. Let's have a look at colors again and see what is our longest, what's our longest color. It's not a great heuristic. Dunducket mud colored man. If a Dunducket mud colored room pops up, I'm gonna be really happy about it. Cause that's a that's the best name in this whole damn thing. Uh, so to, what are we on here? Uh, I need to turn that off. We're on column 23, so well under 50. Dunducket as well, 22. 19. I already did that one. Yeah, so we're well under the 50. We'll just leave it at Django to full. Um, 
We use this validate slug, or validate unicode slug for validation. Perfect, I'm slugifying. So it ought to be useful. It's often useful to automatically populate a slug field based on the value of some other value. You can do this automatically. And then, and then, and then. Okay. So slug field should do what we want and not mess with the, any any contracts that exist about color name. Um, so with that in mind, again, trying to prevent duplication here, I'm going to get a list of all of the used color names. So room.objects.all um, and I want to uh, get a values list of color names and I want it to be flat. So for the uninitiated, a values list is something you can do on a query set uh, to get just just the lists of the um, just the list of, of whatever value exists in a field in all the records. And, and, you know, you can uh, you can uh, um, you can filter, do whatever other stuff you might want to do. Um, but it gives uh, it just gives a really easy way to get just some something out of this thing. So um, for the sake of set. For the sake of, um, of dealing with these things, I want to make them sets, right? I want to I want to get the set of all the possible colors. That's color list, and then I want to um, remove any duplication, right? First off, set does that. If there's any duplicates, it's going to immediately dump them, uh, and then I want to do a uh, sort of set difference on what I get from this. Uh, from color list. So color list minus equals this set. And I think that'll work for us. I think. Uh, it should prevent duplication pretty directly, and it doesn't cause us to fall into any race conditions or anything like that. It does require a database query every time we do it, but that's, you know, what is that? What's it? One banana, George Michael. It's not George Michael, is it? It's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Um, okay, so what was I going to say about that? I was going to check up on that set thing, uh, make sure that um, make sure that I've got the right idea on the difference. Yes, return a new set with elements in the set that are not in the others. Okay, and they do say minus equals is an operator here. So, we should be good. Um, the other, th I guess the last thing is, does len work on a set? Yes, it does. And then uh, that won't work, however. Um, I think, though, if we switch it over to use, we're using random here, I think if we switch it over to use choice, random dot choice, choice, it says sequence, sequence, I think sequence can probably be a set, let's, let's just see, Python set 3.7. Uh, and we'll do set um, A, B, and C. Whoa. Okay, set. The person that can about its shit here. Okay, so S gives us those things. Um, I can do uh, import random, random dot choice. Yes. You son of a. Mm. Okay, so either way, I have to make it a list. Good night. Okay, that gives me one. So that just says that um, 
we need to do that thing. I'm gonna switch it over. Uh, choice, and we'll do list of color list, and just so that it doesn't. strip off any new line, no problem. Um, okay, yeah, that should work fine. Just to make it a little less possibly confusing, I'm gonna change the color set. And then let's run our test again and see what we got. Still got this available, so let's do that. Whoa. Oh, didn't like it because it. I never ran. I never made migrations. I added a field to the database. It means you have to make migrations. Um, Let's make the other changes that are going to be necessary to make this thing work, and then we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. This is this is driving me bonkers here. Fix this. I'm gonna get rid of this long comment. And we have a nice narrow file now. Um, right. So I was gonna fix it up so that everything was referencing color slug. up before the two hour mark. So here I am to rock you like a hurricane. Docker compose down. I want to try to show how this could work um, with that command thing. Uh, so docker compose Guess I'm doing an up. Can I override stuff with an up, or am I am I hosed there? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna make it easy on me. But I can almost certainly do it with Docker itself. Help. I want to do a run. Run a command in a new container. Um, that's gonna get that's gonna get nasty because I gotta rebuild stuff. Oh man, did I hang on, let me let me check my Docker compose here. Oh man, I kind of hosed myself on this unforced error there. Uh, the app gets copied into place before requirements.txt does. So I'm going to do that. That means that next time, um, means that next time I run build, it's going to do the whole damn thing again because. App source changed uh, 
rather grotto as we see it changed. Requirements.txt doesn't change as often though. So yeah, building another Docker is going building another Docker container is gonna take for next time. And let's uh, let's run uh, uh, make migrations. That's gonna create a uh, color slot without default. Can't do that. going to complain about it if I put a default in because it wants it to be unique and default won't be unique. So let me add a default in models.py. Okay, so I'm here. I'm going to do default equals um, Well, hell, I don't know what to do with that. Um... Let's just say uh, null equals true. How about that? How you like me now? Yeah, take that. It's not going to be true. It's not going to be null in practice um, because we're going to create it. We're going to add it. This is, I think, really the only place where rooms get created. Um, so. Yeah, this is kind of like the service for, for making rooms. Uh, so as long as nothing violates that and makes its own room, then we shouldn't run into any problems. So, but now. And now let's do test again. It shouldn't complain this time. It's generating rooms. I like it. It's gonna be slightly slower from all of the, the, the extra querying that's going on, but that shouldn't matter because it happens uh, least often. Cool, and now it's gonna complain because the existing ones don't have slugs, but if I get into the shell, I can fix that pretty easily. So, from builds or models in for room. So for r in room dot object. Now, hang on, before I get into that, let's do from Django util text import slugify for r in room dot object dot solve. dot color slug equals slugify r dot color name r dot save wow okay yeah fine that's cool be a jerk then I don't care um doesn't bother me didn't actually do my migrations. I made them, but I need to also migrate. So huzzah, fix that. So let's go back and let's do the same thing again. Do my import. I will do my other import. this carefully R dot save just type that manually and everything is cool. So now look oh boy. Oh yeah because I shut her down. Yeah I shut her down. And then um, run server. So these links are still wrong. That's no problem. We should just be able to get straight to gray. Ugh, you are such a freaking jerk. Oh yeah, I didn't fix the template. So over 
here. I need to change this to slug. And that fixes that. I think index.html in map builder is what is making these things. So I'll change this as well to Gray room, the green room, the transparent room. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> uh, whiteness room, glow in the dark room, sparkly room. Get some sparkles. Sparkles. Um, I. Yeah. I think this is going well and then back here if I hover yeah we get light slate gray room love it okay so I'm pretty happy with this I think that it is an improvement on the URLs at a minimum I think that the tests show that um, everything is working okay as far as the uh, the services are concerned um, so I'm I'm fairly happy with this I'm gonna push it don't push it potzer um, pow. I can review these changes real quick that's slug field importing slugify getting rid of some time oh that was a big one pull up Let's go ahead and unstage that. That's that's real big. Um, so give me some comments. Changing how colors, making sure that colors aren't repeated. Um, getting rid of some long comments and uh, adding color slug there and returning row. Okay. We'll call that good. Um, mainly bug fixes here. Edge case handling. Totally new stuff here. Yeah. URLs. That one looks good. Views. Getting all that set up to use the new name that we set up. And then um, that test was outdated. I should probably just delete it all together, but that's fine. I'll leave it alone. Um, whenever my uh, any white space at the end of a line, so that's what that's about. Um, using slug here, using slug there. Should have one new migration. Let's stage it. Um, in general, I would do. I would like run black on this to make all the, the formatting right, not right, but to make it consistent. Um, and I would do some other. I would do like flake eight to get rid of any lint, and help me get rid of any lint, and then um, maybe I sort to sort the imports just to make everything really consistent and uniform. Um, but again, this is a this is a game. It's a casual development foray to learn Django and to um, you know make a fun thing for friends. So I'm not gonna be a stickler about code quality or anything like that. That just that just turns people off. So um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's uh, let's put a, a commit message together. Uh, always the hardest part of writing any code. Um, I want to updating updating URLs to new format. Okay, and then I'll hit commit on this, and I'll hit push, and uh, I think that takes us to the end of our streaming time today. We're coming in just under two hours. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you liked it, feel free and holler. Uh, I might bump this over to YouTube for posterity's sake. Yeah, 
everybody take care um, and uh, have a good day.